coffee, and uh, I teach in the administrative management section. So it's a, either way. Well, I think what we're, we do real well is, is that as staff, as faculty, uh, not literally, but figuratively, we expose ourselves to these students. And they get to see and hear about our experiences, all the bruises and the scars, and also the successes. And so they see us as real world people who have been through a lot of the organizational employment uh, life that they're getting ready to enter. And we're not just you know people running around with doctor degrees spouting off theory. We're also telling really life real life stories and giving some you know some hard earned or knowledge and, and, uh, and insight into the world. Well, I think you've got students, uh, professionals, non-traditional people that are looking at, at applied education. Applied education, you've got some theory, I've got some skills, but I've also got some interpersonal uh, background and working to these industries, especially in small organizations uh, or in our, the small organization and the larger uh, corporation. And I think that's one of the benefits of, of the ITEM Plan if you want to call it that, the organizational uh, background, is that it's a balanced, very, very uh, generalized set of uh, overview of skill sets. Uh, there's still a lot of concentration in the benefit administration, uh, classic information technology, the web database, uh, retail management, and the EMG, administrative management section, but they still have to take areas, you know, in the other three, three majors, and it's a real balance. Experience here and really good job placements, internships are working out really well, well. And people are consistently calling us back two or three years after graduation saying, you know, I, I was always hoping that this would be applied, I was always hoping that this would work, and, and it does. Well, I think the industry benefits because they've got students, uh, you know, recent graduates who are walking into their organization understanding what it takes to be of service to an organization. And I think we, we uh, and I think that students that really understand the balance between intrinsic rewards and extrinsic rewards. And, and, and they understand that I'm going to work for an organization that's going to not only benefit me extrinsically, but I'm going to be able to benefit the greater good of the organization, uh, whether it be social justice, whatever the case may be. I'm going to help out, you know, with, you know, with, you know with, 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 with the big picture, and that's a benefit to me. Uh, we rarely see students that are over-focused on it. You know, money, title, power, and understanding that that's necessary. That's all part of the any, uh, job, if you want to call it that. They really understand you know, the, the overall benefit to society and, and their own personal growth to become better people. And that's, that's all through you know, my 10th grade. Well, the best part of teaching for me, I think, is, is the developmental changes that you see. Whether it's again, it's traditional age students or the, uh, uh, the non traditional age students. See the light bulbs are coming on. See people coming to realize these are my inherent skills, these are my inherent strengths, these are uh, areas of which I, I probably need to avoid because I'm not hardwired to be good in that area. But I'm also then very uh, appreciative of other people that are good in areas that I'm not at. Uh, so you really just have, again, a well balanced um, experience where you just see, see people growing, uh, not so much changing, but becoming more who they actually are. Well, yeah, I, I, you know, the one that pops in my head happened about two years ago. He, he had uh, uh, graduated a couple of years before. He was one of my first graduates when, you know, when I came, came on board. And one of the concepts that I spent a lot of time in, in the 372 class, the leadership and development class, uh, is a, you know, it's out there in the leadership field, but it's more of a psychological change profile theory. It's called single versus double with learning. After uh, Ardris and Schoen, these two researchers have developed it. And it's it's something that you gotta explain to them and you gotta you have to put their thinking caps on a little bit and understand the concept. And it, it basically allows leaders to understand I'm gonna have followers who don't want to change. They don't want to look at their own issues, they don't want to be advised, they don't want to be consulted, they're never gonna admit when they're wrong, and they're gonna be totally focused on energy management. And those are the single loop learners. The double loop learners are what we're trying to train people to do is to reevaluate my worldview, reevaluate what we call my governing variables, and take a look at, you know, why did I just get in trouble? Why didn't this work? And what about me do I need to change? What about me based on my values and worldview do I need to alter a little bit? And it's a hard concept to, to get students to understand, but they usually, something clicks. So this guy had come back, he's working for, I, I, I believe, uh, Amazon, and it just gotten pumped up through the leadership chain. I think he moved up two different levels. 
and he talked to one of his, his leaders in, in the organization and said, you know, what was the biggest thing you liked about me? And, and, and they said, during your interview, you know, we knew that you'd be great because you brought up this concept that we totally believe in, but no one talks about it, called single versus double reporting. We knew you must have had a great education and you must know what the heck's going on. And so he came back and told me that. You know, this small little conceptual framework you know, impressed his people. So I was, yeah, great. <laughs>